we're live. It's time for real. Hello. Hey. <laughs> hello. 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 Hello and welcome to Let's Keep Charm Take Three. Uh, we're, and we're from the Five Center for Our Qualities. Hi there. Hello. Hi. Hi. And today we're chatting with Stacy from Your Head Outreach Project. Hey, there, Stacy. Thanks for being, for being there and re-recording this with us. It's been a few takes already, so let's hope this one works. <laughs> uh, it's a Here's podcast. Girls. Yeah, it's a podcast, it's a video, uh, and people can see it on YouTube as well with subtitles. Yeah, the podcast about community groups or organisations from around five, and we're chatting about what they have been doing to help people from different equality groups um, and how they're dealing with poverty and coping with the COVID-19 situation. Good stuff. Let's just jump into it because well, it's the third time we're recording this and let's hope that the connection stays throughout this time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I think that the three of us have become quite acquainted. <laughs> <laughs> So let's chat about Muirhead uh, Outreach Project. Stacey, can you tell us about what you do in the role in the organisation? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to quickly do is just give you a bit of back, really quick background about what um, where Muirhead came from. Okay, so um, Cairn, Cairn Moore um, Child Care Partnership run a number of um, children's homes in the local area. And what they were finding was that often the children that they had referred to them probably would have been able to stay in the family home if they had been given the right support earlier on. And that's where Muirhead was kind of born from that idea. And what we want to do, and what we still, our, our main aim is to keep um, families together through challenging times. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what we want to do is prevent um, children from going into care. Um, we are a very, very small charity. Um, we have a, a number of board members, five. Um, I'm not going to run through absolutely everybody because um, obviously we're kind of limited for time here. But our chairperson is Bob Beasley. Now, Bob um, has experience um, of, of being in care himself and is obviously very passionate about the work that we do at Muirhead. Um, we have two part-time support workers, myself and Mandy, and our only full-time member of staff is Kylie, our amazing manager. And we have three part-time dogs who like to keep us company in the office. <laughs> um, ultimately, what Muirhead started off, uh, as I say, is an early intervention service. Um, we worked with social, very closely with social work, um, and pre predominantly we were kind of um, <clears throat> providing sort of, um, you know, some respite in the form of like youth clubs. Um, holiday clubs and things like that. Um, we also worked with um, social work again, trying to get that early intervention to prevent children going into care. Now, as you can imagine, over the years, um, social work funding has cut, the referrals kind of dropped to us. So we had to really think, you know, what what is our role? Where do we see ourselves and what do we want to do? And as I said, for quite a long period of time, we were kind of just focusing on holiday clubs and youth clubs for for children for that bit of respite. Um, Kylie joined us in 2017, I think it was. I'm sure she'll correct me if I'm wrong on this. Um, but yeah, she joined comments? in 2000, yeah, 2017 and she really wants to take stock of, you know, what is it that Muirhead have been doing? What do we want to achieve? What are other organisations in the, the local community doing? Where is our greatest need? Um, obviously, because we've got limited resources, i.e. staff, and we really wanted to concentrate on the areas that, that we were finding really needed our help. And that, the decision then was taken that we would concentrate solely on the Leaving Mouth and Glenrothes area. And these are areas that we find that we get our most referrals from. Um, most um, these areas are kind of the ones that suffer from economic um, deprivation. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be able to give a full concentration to those areas. And we still focus on those areas at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we also started taking, made the change to take self-referrals. Previous to that, it was obviously referrals from social work or other organisations. So we started taking self-referrals and that was really important for Muirhead because that meant then that we could respond very quickly to that first cry for help mm -hmm. rather than waiting for a referral to come through and the response time it takes. So we respond very, very quickly to our families and that's crucial, really crucial. Um, <clears throat> Most of our referrals um, come from 
schools, um, other organisations in the community, and as I said, self referrals either through our Facebook, um, mm -hmm. our internet, or they can call us, um, and we do respond very, very quickly. So, so what, what kind of activities, or uh, mm -hmm. you would say, when, if someone gets referred, what what what, what tends to happen? If you can tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so what we do is we have a meeting, all three of us, Kylie, myself and Mandy, and we look through the referral details. And, you know, off, there might be times where we, we have a look or we speak to the family and we say, you know, that we're not the right service for this family. It could be that there's some serious underlying mental health issues that need to be addressed before they're at a position where they're able to, to kind of work with us. So we would never, ever leave a family and say, we are not the right service for you. I'm sorry, that's it. We always endeavour to find the right service for that family to do the signposting for them. The families that we do um, take on, our key role, fundamental role, is we do a, a, an eight-week foundation programme. Um, I'll tell you briefly, it's, it's quite extensive, so I'll try and be quite brief about it. Um, our eight-week foundation programme is basically that. We are predominantly dealing with, you know, the kind of situations where there's been some sort of breakdown in the relationship between families, um, parents and the children. Um, <clears throat> communication has broken down. Um, we see families who are having some um, difficulties with dealing with challenging behaviour, um, not attending school, um, whole, whole sorts of things. Um, and what we do is our foundation programme is just that. We are looking at building the foundations that are often um, you know, broken for through various reasons, various, various reasons. Um, so the kind of things we look at is, you know, we, we work on communication, fundamentally communication, okay? So we want to build those foundations. We want to be able to get families to be able to communicate effectively with each other. Um, often we find that we start communicating in a, a certain way and, and it's not working for us. Um, so we're able to look at other ways, more effective ways of communicating with our children. Um, and we do that by really guiding our, our parents, looking at, you know, let's really try and get to know our children. Um, we spend so much time with our children in the house, but how much of that time is quality time? Do we really know our children? Try, so we work on um, tools and techniques so that parents are equipped and they can really start to really listen to their children, mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. what their children are trying to say to them. Um, and work together as a team, you know, to resolve any issues that they're having. Um, ultimately, um, as I said, it's about looking at those those better communication strategies. It's not easy, and you know, this foundation work is is very very is a, is a very difficult program. We will go in and we will give we will guide parents and we'll give them the tools and the techniques and strategies to try. But ultimately, it's the parents that have to put the work in and it's really 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 hard work and once the eight-week programs finished this work has to continue um it's an ongoing process our foundation work is not about saying you know um once you finish this you're never going to come across any challenges any difficult times with your children yes. um because that's that's never going to happen you're always going to come across difficult times with your children but uh, hopefully and we certainly are very successful in doing this, um, doing this, is that we are able to build those foundations, which makes it that little bit easier to deal with like, these um, challenging times. Um, the other thing that's really crucial in the foundation work, mm -hmm. Lisa, are you okay there? <laughs> I was just going to ask, <laughs> no, I was just gonna ask um, what, um, what kind of, like, protected characteristics groups do you sort of keep to like working within your organization okay so now uh, am i right in thinking i think there's nine protected characteristics aren't they okay and i think it's like race age um mm -hmm. sex all those kind of things you you know what we we don't stick to a certain characteristic it really is tailored to each of the families that we don't we're not restricted to a certain characteristic we will help anybody absolutely anybody that's in need um so no and i did think about this question because I, I um the protected characteristics once i knew you were going to ask me about that but no there's certainly not any particular characteristic that we focus on 
it's a holistic approach. So in some, in some ways you work with age because it's yes. younger people and their families. Yes. But, yes. we, but we, we, we look at when uh, protected characteristics overlap. So, some, so sometimes you might notice that, well, because of this COVID now, you might notice that actually it might be age and maybe disability are, uh, are facing a, a big uh, issue for schooling, or it might be age and, and race because of language. So it's, it's a kind of way to, to think about what are the specific barriers. It's, it's um, because we're, we're Center for Equalities, we work with all the characteristics, but it's 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 not the way to really think about things because we are all human. So the characteristics come afterwards. Yeah. yeah. But but sometimes you can notice a pattern. You can uh, like sometimes we notice that yeah, homeschooling has been really hard on anyone. Yeah. Uh, there's a range of things. So but disability has been a, a big issue. There, communications, poverty, uh, access to all yeah. that so these yeah. span everything so maybe you, maybe you notice something with with, with uh, your people you've been working with uh maybe maybe uh i don't know uh, maybe something to do with uh autism uh, or anxiety of of staying at home actually that might be less or more so yeah. you might have noticed something so that's yeah what else. yeah absolutely i mean I think in our previous conversation we had spoken about this, so anxiety is, is, a, is a big issue um, for a lot of our families. Um, loneliness, I think we spoke about that before as well, is a, is a huge thing for our families as well because they're not getting the connections with friends, um, children as well, they're not getting that same connections with their friends, they're not getting to meet their friends. Um, but yeah, um, you know, and this is what we we're saying about the foundation work. Often, the families that we have gone through our foundation work, they have they have a, that, that kind of they're in a better place. I would say to be able to kind of manage these challenges. Um, the families that are coming to us, new referrals, they've not got that kind of build the, the foundations to build from or to work on, um, mm -hmm. and they really are struggling. Um, the homeschooling, yeah. Um, as you've, you've probably come across as is a real issue. So some of our, you know, some of our, our, our children are really thriving, so, uh, being at home. Um, they, they're enjoying being at home. They're getting that quality time with their parents. Some of the kids were really struggling at school. So for them not to be at school is actually probably a great thing. They're loving it. Um, other kids, yeah, um, access to technology. I know that the schools and things like that have um, certainly been doing what they can to get um, technology out to the, the, the kids and we um, managed to access some emergency funding and we were able to purchase some Chromebooks and those have been distributed to the families who don't have access to um, digital technologies and really that's so that they can keep connected and um, we we have had to completely change the way that we are working obviously our service we provide we, we ultimately we're going out to people's houses all the time and so we can't do that we've had to stop that so we had to really rethink, you know, how, how are we going to still be able to offer their, our support to the families when they need us? And that being able to stay in contact was a huge thing. So though, us being able to get those Chromebooks out to our families or the families certainly that needed it was 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 a huge benefit for them. We've been looking at um, developing and we're, we're just really just due to start doing um, parent groups. Normally, to let you understand, normally in normal times, we would be going out and having coffees and we'd have paint groups or they would come here and we'd all just, it's just a, a chance to sit and chat and, and relax and kind of, you know, make connections with people in the local community. We weren't able to do that. So we have, the Chromebooks um, have been a great way and we've, we've started mm -hmm. up um, paint groups. So those are due to start next week. Our youth clubs have all stopped, which is difficult for the kids. They're, they really, really love to come in here. Um, we are looking at starting the, having like a kind of video chat with the kids as well, so they can all connect with each other. Um, so those are the things that we're doing. We've also adapted all of our foundation work so it can be done digitally now, um, which is great. I mean, it's it, it, in a sense, this pandemic and uh, has kind of forced us to, to make changes that maybe we were a wee bit reluctant to do or, a bit scared to do in the, um, prior to that. So we've been forced to make these changes and actually um, mm, it has yeah. really benefited a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's you're never going to beat that sort of face-to-face -face contact, um, but it has forced us to change and we have done. And ultimately it means that we'll be able to reach people um, regardless now. We don't even have to go into people's houses. So yeah, um, what we're also doing at the moment as well, we're really, really um, focused on building connections with 
schools and other organisations, support organisations. So at the moment, we are due to start um, our foundation work with, we, we basically asked um, people in the schools, teachers in the schools, other organisations, if they would like to work through our eight week, eight week programme with us, and do it online. So we've had quite a good response. So we're due to start that next week. And there's been people from schools, other organisations, and they're going to work through it. And ultimately, it's about letting them know what Muirhead, what services we have to offer. Um, and they can pick up tips and things that they can then continue in the schools. Um, I think we had spoke about this before. The difficulty is we can go in and, and work with families. But if that work is not kind of continued in the home or in the schools, then we mm -hmm. struggle. So we want to see that we're all kind of working in partnership, working as a team, so to speak, so yeah. that we can get really, really, really work and get the, the support that this this young child or our young teen needs. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're doing at the moment. We're due to start that next week. I feel like you are more of a mediator between the families and the schools, because to me, sometimes I feel schools don't listen properly to parents about how their child is needing extra help over an issue and mm. say the family's like in a vulnerable situation or something you know sometimes schools judge families based on their backgrounds and with you sort of being a mediator does it sort of help more so the schools can understand the situation better within the family I told yeah, I mean, and, that, and that's a good way to describe it, Lisa, actually, sometimes it does kind of feel like you're, the, you're you're sort of that mediator. But what I would say to you is, is that ultimately what we, what we want to do is we want to be able to work with the parents and work with the family so that so that the parents are in a position where their confidence is, is improves in such a way that they are able to communicate with the school. Often our parents are mm -hmm. really struggling with confidence. And that's one of the things that they say that they want to get from working with Muirhead. I really want to improve my confidence. I, I struggle with getting in touch with the school. I struggle with knowing what to say. I feel like I'm, I'm frustrated with school. Not just school, you know, it's just an example. So it's about, you know, so yeah, in a way, there is that kind of mediation. But ultimately, what we want to do is we want to create those relationships. We want to start those relationships and work on building those relationships between the parent mm -hmm. and the school so that the parent is in a position and feels confident enough to say, you know what, I can deal with this. Um, so, I mean, our role isn't predominantly working with schools, it's working with the family. It's just that these yeah. things are all interlinked. It you could, can't could be, have... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. But it could no, be no, like, no, you're it, fine. Uh, uh, like helping them access maybe health or like advice or uh, maybe the first placement or work or something like that. So it doesn't really matter uh, what it is that the young person needs. So basically, you're working with family so that they can actually access that service if they can do it. That's on, it. On, yeah, got that's it. it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and that's it. I mean, to give you an example, I might kind of arrange meetings with the schools or, or we, we kind of work back and forwards, but we always include the parents in those meetings. We would mm -hmm. always include the parents. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to sort of set, set the groundwork for that, build the relationship so that the parents can be in a position where they feel confident enough to deal with these issues themselves. Um, and we are really successful at that. I mean, building relationships is one of the things that I would say Muirhead is exceptionally good at. And I'm, as I say, I'm going to mm. blow our own trumpet here. Um, well, I think, <laughs> no, I think what, what we need to remember is that, you know, families who are in, in, in crisis, or they're, they're, they're dealing with really challenging times. They often, when they get to us, they've maybe been in contact with other professionals, other organisations, and can get a bit disheartened sometimes, you know, and are often suspicious about the intentions of professionals mm -hmm. or organisations who are going to work with them, particularly when it is involved in children's behaviour. And ultimately, you, the, the, the mm -hmm. worry is, the bottom line is they worry, are my kids going to be taken away from me? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Are, are, are these workers going to judge us? And, and that is one thing that we really pride ourselves on and we really, really work hard to do at Muirhead is to build those relationships of trust with our families. And we start that from the very beginning when we when we go out to see our families, you know, we make it clear and we actually have um, what we call our family agreement. And it's about saying, look, this is what you can expect from us. This is what we would let ask for um, from in return from you. Um, and, you know, 
the type of work that we do, the kind of things that we're going to come across, there are going to be times where we're going to have to have really difficult conversations. But it's about being honest with each other. If there's something, we always say to our families, you know, if there's something you don't agree with, if there's something you're not sure about, please tell us. Um, you know, we, okay, our eight week foundation program follows a kind of a structure. But at the end of the day, we're dealing with different people here with different needs. And actually, some things that we do might not work. We might have to tailor it. We might have to tweak it. We might have to try mm -hmm. other strategies. And we, re we really do pride ourselves on building those relationships with our uh, with our families. And we are, I mean, the feedback that we get is, is fantastic. And it's something that, as I said, I can't say this enough, we really, really do pride ourselves on. And I think that's one of the things that comes out in our feedback is that our parents say, you know, they don't judge us, you know, I feel like we can talk for the first time, I feel like I can be honest and talk. Mm -hmm. and, um, That's really important, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I said, it, as I say, we do, our foundation work does kind of follow a certain structure, but um, ultimately we need to make tweaks here and there. And you know what, at the end of the day, we might not, we might not get it right first time either. We might need to try something else. But what we want to do is we want to get the children and the, fact that the parents and the children, um, parents and the children being able to make those connections again you know really getting to know your kids what where are they happy where are they, what are they doing when they're relaxed um mm -hmm. where do they get their sense of belonging and then looking at well what triggers what what stress factors has, has your child got really sitting back and that could be looking at body language really really paying attention to what your children are saying to you um, and, mm. and making sure you've understood, you know, what are their triggers? What stresses them out? It, it, I can't, I could give you, I could sit and give you a million examples here. Um, but yeah, and it's about really, really getting to know our families and communicating better. We also work on like um, being able to understand emotions and express emotions. And these mm -hmm. things, if we can get these things right, then we are in an excellent place. It's not easy. It's really not easy. We can't go in and wave a magic wand. Um, mm -hmm. And it takes hard work, hard, hard work. So, so it's a bit, they used to call it emotional intelligence and all that, but basically reading very well how people are and actually paying really attention to it mm -hmm. and, and improving the quality of life. But before uh, the child and for the parent, trying to make things much with, with what you have already at home, is it, so you, so there's, it sounds like it's creating new new habits, new routines. Absolutely, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And one of the things that we we focus on is, you know, if you, when we work on the first couple of weeks, and we say, well, where have a have a think about where your child gets their sense of belonging. I.e., do they do they get a sense of belonging from their football team, from fishing with their dad? Do they get it from with their friends, their family? A whole host mm -hmm. of things. We want to really focus on those things and we want to, to, to try and get more of that. Now, I think I'd said to you earlier that, um, I mean, we, especially particularly at the moment, we're in each other's pockets 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. But how much of that time that we're spending together is quality time? So we really want to kind of, we work with our families to try and have a set time where they actually sit together and they spend, even if it's an hour, half an hour, and they decide together, you know, this is going to be our time together and this is what we're going to do. And it's about really getting together and kind of saying, right, we're going to really focus on this time. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. spending so much time with my son at the moment, but as I said, probably only about an hour of that is actual quality time where we're, we're sitting talking or whatever. So, yeah, it's and you're right, you, you've, you've, you've nailed it there. It's about, you know, completely trying to change our habits and really stopping and thinking about the way we're com communicating and how we are coming across because, and, it, and it's not easy. Um, mm -hmm. It feels alien when you first start doing the foundation work. Um, it feels alien to a lot of our parents. It's just, and the and the kids are like, why is, why is mum speaking to me in this way? Because they're not used to their parents speaking to them in that way. And they're kind of like, oh, that's a bit different. But the more you keep at it and the more you practice it and the more you stick to it, it becomes kind of normalised. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. as I said, we just get wow. so used to communicating in such a way. It is, it is really difficult. It's hard work. It's not easy. Um, and it's well, but nineteen has done that, though. Mm -hmm. it's, it's made people speak more freely about how they're feeling and you yeah. know, even even though you hear about where people are struggling to talk, with some people they've been able to open up more mm. and express how they're feeling. 
yeah mm. over the absolutely. over the last year yeah absolutely um yeah I, I totally agree um and for others not so much i mean sort of others who are particularly people who are, are experiencing loneliness mm -hmm. they don't they don't have that they don't have that that the kind of connections and, and the friends that they could maybe have spoken to before so it's really difficult really really difficult um can, can, can you tell us a bit about how how you are coping uh, yourself and your organization with a pandemic because it's it must have changed a lot like from what you were set yeah. up like a year ago to now so yeah how, how is it going are, 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 are okay, you so in the I, office today in this recording this is the third one you're in the office <laughs> i'm the only one in the office so what we've been doing is obviously we kind of most of the time we're working from home mm -hmm. but for me i find it quite difficult i need to get away from the, from home to actually i think i think for me it's it kind of blurred the boundaries between what is home life and what is work life and you very often kind of overlap so i find it easier to come into the office but there's only ever one of us in the office at the same time and obviously we have to disinfect everything so yeah um personally i mean i started in february last year so it's almost a year in fact i think it's a year tomorrow that i started it yeah it's a year tomorrow or today that i started at muirhead and i had only been here for about well a few weeks and then we went into we went into lockdown and you know i'm i'm, I'm st I still feel like i'm really really new um mm, went yeah. I, I was then furloughed for a period of time and when i came back i was terrified because <laughs> i thought i came back in june or july and i thought you know i've technically i've worked for muirhead for seven months but actually i don't know anything and my background i had never worked with with children but or children that are a child i'd never worked with children before and i was really really scared you know I, my background is in housing and homelessness so it's always kind of um i worked in homeless hostels with, with, with young adults so this was a whole new ball game for me and i was terrified when i came back i thought you know i've done i felt like i hadn't done anything for seven months and now i'm like flung in at the deep end and i was i was petrified but muirhead um Honestly, like absolutely fantastic. The, the the support that we get from our colleagues, and I think it helps because we're such a small team, mm -hmm. um, is just amazing. And I, I've come on leaps and bounds since I, I hope so anyway, since I started. Um, and I do feel like, you know, my confidence has grown a little bit. Um, I think the other girls have kind of struggled, uh, Kylie and Mandy as well. You know, we're such a close team. Mm -hmm. um, and we were always kind of reflecting, bouncing ideas off each other, which we're doing, but just in a different way now. Um, but you do miss that that contact with each other in the office. Um, and I can't wait to get it back. We've got such a lovely team. Mm -hmm. Our volunteers as well, we do have volunteers who were, would help to run our youth clubs or do some one-to-one -one work with our parents. And obviously that's all stopped at the moment. And they, they will be feeling it. They'll be missing the kids because they've developed such a great relationship with the kids and the kids will be missing them too. Mm -hmm. um but we we've we've responded really well you know we've been quite lucky in the sense that we've managed to secure we've got janine our um our fundraiser who is, has done an amazing job she started at the same time as us, as, as me and managed she's done amazing at being able to kind of secure some funding for us i don't know if you know but we are funded entirely on donations and applications for grants or trusts yeah we don't get any local authority um funding whatsoever and janine has just been an absolutely amazing resource she's done such a fantastic job in such a short space of time securing us emergency funding um we did get i think lisa you mentioned in our last chat we did get some funding from um stv we yeah. had a, a nice little mm -hmm. visit from sean batty yeah. um, which Excellent was stuff. great yeah it was great you know we went and visited one of our families and you know the best thing about that was that um the the experience for the kids from that they they, they felt like many celebrities um they were going to school because they were back at school at this point and all their friends were like oh i saw you on the telly and it's just that their, their faces the just the joy that they got from that nice um, stuff. yeah and he took part in our christmas appeal um and he did he so that was just i've never experienced anything it was just it's good to have great. Boost like that it's always good to have something positive uh, it's absolutely definitely... nice to be recognized <laughs> definitely no christmas christmas time at muirhead is just a, such a special time um i can tell you a bit about it if you want me to tell you 
Nah, why not? Why not? I'll be, I'll be very Go quick. I know I can, I, I'm, I'm like, I've got verbal diarrhea, I think. <laughs> I just it's a podcast. Go it's a podcast. You're meant to be chatting. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, as I said, I feel like I have to get this in because Muirhead is so, it's, Christmas time at Muirhead is so special. It's like my first time and, you know, it was just amazing. So we had, um, we have a Christmas appeal where mm -hmm. it's very, very unique and very personal to all of our children so what we did was um we got we have all our children we had 60 this year which was a I think it was nearly double what or, or more than that actually what we had last year and we made up little dis descriptions of each of the children what they were like what they were into a little bit about their personality obviously it was anonymous mm -hmm. and we posted it on our Facebook page and we gave the public the chance to pick a child so it's like a number um to buy for for Christmas and I think we managed to have all of, all of our children, 60 children, accounted for in just under an hour. So it was wow. absolutely fantastic. One and the, hour? One hour, yeah. It was really exciting, the buzz in here, when we, because we put it live, we, we set it to go live, and then it was just a case of, you know, taking everybody's details. But it was a, a, a real buzz in here. Um, but yeah, so under an hour, and oh, the, the generosity of... Um, no! What's happened? No. Net network either. Lost connection. No! <laughs> <laughs> the recording is still going, though. So if Stacy comes back in, we're fine. I think it was. Um, we were the Christmas appeal. The Christmas yeah, you're appeal. Going on to, uh, right, 60 and how it's double yeah. from last year. Yeah. Oh, I was to just go now, go back to where I was. Yeah, so I, I think I got to the part where I kind of said that, yeah, all of our children were accounted for um, in yeah. under an hour. And the generosity of the public was absolutely amazing, like just fantastic. Um, so, yeah, um, but I mean, Muirhead have had to adapt in so many ways. Um, we, our, when, when, we first, when we first went into lockdown, um, we very quickly responded and we got out kind of survival packs for our for our, our families you know we got we secured some funding where um rather than assume what our families needed we got in touch with our families and said look what would make this a wee bit easier for you and some of our families used it for things like food vouchers um we got packs from kind of the buffalo farm um some of our families used it to keep their kids entertained through lockdown so one of our families got a basketball hoop some got trampolines you know we've we really have been working really hard to make sure that we kind of lighten this load a little bit for our families um and we have made sure that we've stayed in touch with them and um, whether that's checking in with them every week through a phone call sometimes we do video chats as i say that's going to become more regular with our parent groups but yeah so they and they always know that we're at the end of the phone um obviously i think they're, they're very understanding our families and know that we we can't sort of come out to see them and things like that but we are trying our very very best and we do keep in touch with our families on a weekly wow. basis so yeah wow, wow. That's good. Really stuff. so stacy um how do people become uh, volunteers to help your group or you know or help with fundraising so you can get, there's a number of ways that you can help us to support Muirhead. And I think the, the biggest thing I would say, the biggest way that you can support us is to talk about us. Um, again, I think we spoke about this before in our first or second attempt, I don't know, but yeah. Um, <laughs> They're all blurring to one now. I don't know. It's just, yeah. yeah. The, internet, the internet is working. The internet is working. Let's just believe That's it. Great. Don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. I, know, I, need to, I need to stop it. I'm jinxing it now. Yeah. I don't want to go for a fourth or fifth attempt, so I'm going to hurry up. Yeah. So the, the best way to support us is to talk about us. And, you know, word of mouth is one of the biggest things for us. A lot of our referrals come from families who, friends of families who have been supported by us before and have really benefited from our service. And so they've, they've contacted us through that. Um, another way is, you know, ask us what we're spending your money on. What, what are we doing with your money? I mean, we've, we're very happy to kind of share pictures. We, we love to tell you how we're spending your money because it all goes to fantastic use for our families. Um, ask us about what we're spending our money on. You can fundraise with us. Um, you can volunteer with us. 
you can join our board and actually we will be we, we are looking for a board member at the moment a treasurer if okay, you want more details on that yeah you can you get access to that on our facebook page so there's lots of ways you can support us but i would say that the biggest way that you could support us at the moment is to talk about us uh, so that we can get to those families that need us um the most that's brilliant no yeah, definitely we share that mm -hmm. sounds good so would you say that's your sort of main call out kind of thing saying you know you just want people to talk and learn more about your group mm -hmm. you if know, anyone it, has yep yeah, if anyone has any questions you can i'd say we're most active on our facebook page we're very very active we've got lots and lots of things going on there's a, a good few posts every day we share kind of tips um especially for for helping our parents kind of cope through through these difficult times but we're very active on facebook and we respond very very quickly to messages on facebook so if anyone has any questions or i'm not sure about anything that i've spoke about today or any of the services that we're offering or if they're there's anything they want to know a wee bit more detail about our foundation work i mean obviously that's been quite brief what i've spoke about today it is really quite extensive um so if anyone wants to know anything specific exactly then you can you can get in touch with us send us a little message on facebook give us a phone um yeah absolutely we're happy to hear from every anyone anyone at all if you have even the smallest question just get in touch with us if you're Sounds interested nice. in volunteer the best way to get in touch with us would be i would say through our facebook page and i know that obviously not everyone has got social media um but yeah give us a phone um at the moment unfortunately there's not always someone in the office because we're working from home but there, there is someone who comes in at least once a day for a few hours and there is a message facility so leave a message and we'll get we're oh. very very quick to respond sounds good i might i might send you we invite for a cheeky wee blog but kind of but a wee cheeky video. blog yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why not because people like reading something not everyone as you say not everyone can come online and stream or listen but sometimes folk just like reading so yeah, uh, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch about that yeah yeah that of course good. no problem good stuff that's brilliant and uh so are you organizing any specific events in the coming uh, few weeks or months or basically you're basically working with families and basically that will be yeah. the things to look forward to really yeah at the moment we're kind of in what we would call sort of survival mode i mean we have got a long-term plan for muirhead um i think kylie had spoke to me about it yesterday I, I don't know the full details but she's been working on that uh i think the term she used was survive thrive and no survive strive and thrive um, and in the moment, obviously, like we yep. At the moment, we are, and I hope I hope I've got that right. I'm sure she'll she'll tell me if I've got it wrong, but I'm sure that's what it was. At the moment, we are in and kind of survive mode, um, really just focusing on supporting our families through these really difficult times at the moment. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy that the internet managed to stay till now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed it's getting dark outside now? Yes, <laughs> Do you hear that yeah. <laughs> Lisa, get in there quickly before you, you lose connection again. I know. Oh my goodness. Right. Thank you, Stacey, for You're welcome. Thank you so for much. coming along. Thank, again listen, thank you so much for thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about Muirhead and to chat about us. I really appreciate oh, it. And I hope I certainly hope that I've I've done us justice. Definitely yeah. have. Yeah. No, no, that, that's what the Are podcast you? here is is so that groups get their voice heard then you yeah. know people know where to go and ask for help kind of thing yeah. what we will yeah. do is we will share it we'll post it and then uh, if there's anyone getting in touch we're interested uh, your contacts will be on the page but uh, we'll we'll also pass any messages directly to you so yeah that's, and as that's I said, I can't, <laughs> yeah i can't stress enough if there's any families out there who are particularly struggling at, struggling at the moment I, I'm not sure I want to ask any more questions. Please get in touch with us. If we can't help you or we're not the right service for you, we will make sure that we will get you the right service. Okay? Brilliant stuff. Right. Thank you so much. It was lovely to meet you both. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Stay warm. All the best for today. Oh, Take well. care. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>